y'all welcome to heavy cardboard where apparently all we play is medium games at least that it's an inside joke never mind welcome to uh heavy cardboard teach play and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games war games 18xx i'm your host edward euler you guys know that wow that zoomed in tight yeah i think it looks better though anyway welcome everybody today it's solo game day well sort of i mean it's just me playing the game i guess technically but joined by y'all because uh, we're doing a solo playthrough of, I'm going to figure this out one of these days, To Want and Sue You, designed by David Tertzi and published by Board and Dice. Now, Board and Dice kindly provided us with this review copy of the game. They didn't sponsor the playthrough. I just said, hey, I want to play this solo, so if I'm going to do that, I might as well stream it, right? Might as well. Made sense to me. So welcome, everybody, watching live around the world, as well as after the facts. Hopefully y'all are having a great Saturday morning, afternoon, evening, Sunday, depending on where it is you are around the world. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I haven't played with the Automa yet. I have gone through the rules a couple times and it seems pretty straightforward. It's a little bit more involved than some Automas, but I think once we get going, I think, uh, I think it'll make sense. Now, we did do a full teach and play through of the game previously. It was myself, Jess, and Rainer. Rainer being uh, one of the main folks over at Board and Dice, and he taught the game. I'm not gonna do a full teach today because honestly, it doesn't make sense because we have that video. Instead, what I'm going to do is give an overview of the game and then get started and show you guys and, and go over the Automa, obviously, a little bit more in detail. But other than that, we're gonna get started. So hopefully, you guys are ready, I'm ready. Like, subscribe, smash that, that seems so phony. Anyway, give it a thumb, subscribe, you know, if you're so inclined. Support the show over on pledgehc.com. Again, if you're so inclined, I certainly would appreciate it. But that said, to want and sue you. I'm dating myself a little bit here, but every time I hear the end of that, the sue, sue, sue to you, little Genesis, Phil Collins, Reference. <clears throat> anyway, all right. To want and sue you, the NK Empire. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just get into it. I guess we could go over the uh, the theme, if you will. The Great Sapa Inca. Oh boy, this was a mistake. Uh, Pachacuti had just turned to his offspring and ordered them to worship Inti, the sun god, and in his name uh, to spread the empire as far as the lamas roam. In order to be named Pachacuti's successor, players will need to compete to see who can gain the, ma the most fame in the eyes of the people. Fame can be gained from worshiping the gods, constructing tapestries from beautiful weavings, performing conquests into Chinchasuyu, uh, Antasuyu, Kualasuyu, or Kantasuyu, the four regions of the new empire, and more. While there are many paths to the fame needed, the one thing is one thing is certain. It is a long trip from the central great Korinchacha. Let's try that again. Korinkancha temple to the workshops of the hillside and the village below. As was customary in Inca culture, the slopes around Korinkancha temple have been formed into terraces. These provide level land on which potato and corn can be harvested, stone and gold can be quarried, and the weavers can produce their weavings and builders can build workshops. Unfortunately, descending from the temple to these terraces is a backbreaking task. So all who work on the hills are eager to give fame and gifts to those who build steps to make this downward journey easier. There are many paths forward in Tawantan Suyu, but no clear path to becoming the great Pachacuti's successor. Help expand the empire through conquest, craft tapestries that will be talked about for centuries, 
gained fame through the constructing steps for your people and statues of Inti and secure your place as the next Sapa Inca. All right. Whew. Let's do this, shall we? All right. So the main game board, victory point track, round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Then we have the central part of the board here, the hill. All right, it's broken up into five sections. So you have kind of a section that comes down this way, two, three, four, five, because it's a, uh, oh boy, one, two, pentagram, right? Yeah, there we go. And it's broken up into three terraces. You have the, the temple at the top, you have Terrace 1, Terrace 2, Terrace 3, as you can see, that goes around the outside of the temple, all right, or the main structure here in the middle. Then we have the temple track over here. Then we have the four conquest regions. So we have Chinchasu, Chinchasu, you, who I will try this one more time. I actually did practice these too. Chinchasu, -su you up there in the top left corner. In the top right corner, we have Antasuyu, then we have uh, Kualasuyu, and then Kantasuyu over here. Then we have the Nomads here, we have the Temple Track there, we have the uh, the Casualties of War box way up yonder, but I may, I may cheat and move that a little bit. Uh, then down below, we have the Permanent Buildings, we have production buildings, we have the army cards, we have the weaving uh, deck or, or tile stack and tiles, and then we're going to have some god cards as well. Then we have the statues, the large and the small statues, as you can see there. And then basically everything from the board over to the main board, all of this area over here is what is called the uh, Axomama, or you know the bot, the Automa. It, they, this, that is the Automa. The, everything to the right of the Automa, so these two little uh, workers here and the high priest and the orange is going to be my area over there, all right? So, and we'll adjust as we need be. So the, kind of the gist of what it is that we're going to be doing here in Tawantan Suyu is we're going to have some number of workers and we're going to have some number of God cards in our hand. And we're going to do actions that are going to be uh, constructing tapestries, they're going to be building statues, uh, placing workers out here on the board on these various icons out here to gain resources to then eventually gain victory points, all right? It's kind of point salady in some regards, uh, but there's a lot to it. If you're familiar with any of David Turtsy's games, this is going to seem somewhat familiar yet unique as well, all right? So on our turn, what we're going to be doing is either placing a worker out here on any of these open areas here and taking the associated actions that are surrounding where that worker is placed and taking a number of actions. We'll go into that in detail as we actually play the game. Or in lieu of that, we can take secondary actions, which include with our high priest. So our high priest is going to be out here on these various actions out here. We're either going to move our uh, high priest up there, we're going to take some god cards, we're going to take some army cards, or we're gonna recruit workers, or move the high priest to be able to take whatever the action is that we move the high priest to. All of this, we're going to be doing in the hopes of gaining victory points. Now, when the village is empty of workers over here, which we'll be acquiring those through our actions as well, when the village is empty, we are going to have a festival. The game takes place over the course of three festivals. At the end of the third festival, we're gonna go into final scoring, and then whoever scores the most points wins. Now, I do have a threshold that I have to uh, meet as well as beat the Automa, as you can see the, the victory point markers up there in the top left corner. So yeah, this should be, uh, this should be interesting, it should be a good time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and outline a little bit what the Automa is going to be doing. And then I think, honestly, we're just gonna jump into it at that point, all right? So the Automa 
there's a lot of information here on the Automa board. Now, the player aid that I have here, every player has a player aid here, and on the back of it is an Automa, all right? And to the best of my knowledge, all of the Automas are identical. And I guess theoretically, no, I don't think you can play with more than one Automa now that I think about it. Um, so they're just double printed or double sided, all right? So what's going to happen is we are always going to take the first turn. And then the Automa is going to take a look and see if they can do one of the High Priest activations, okay? So let's go ahead and look at this a little bit more in detail here and uh, there. All right, so it's going to be at an angle because of the way I positioned everything, but sorry about that. So we're going to look to see, can the Automa do any of the actions? And by any, I mean wherever their, their High Priest is out here they can move up to two spaces. So if their high priest was on this location, we would then check to see if they could do a conquest or a rejuvenation action. So we would take a look at those two, at the conquest and rejuvenation, and see if, call it qualifies, right? If the Automa qualifies to do either of those. If so, it, if it qualifies for both, it will do the first one. If it only qualifies for the second, it will do just the second. If it qualifies for none of those, then it's going to do the, a board action, so which is placing workers. Now, there is an exception over here that is actually in this little box right there. It says if they have no workers, then do this instead. So going to go ahead and do one of those actions as well. So that's basically how this is going to work. Do the high priest activation and then do whatever the high priest action is, or in lieu of that, do the board actions, all right? Now the board actions, that's where this is going to come in to play, all right? We're gonna roll the die and then whatever uh, these numbers are that match the die roll, which I should point out, there is one, one, one there is one, four, two twos and two threes. Okay, so it's a weighted die, obviously, towards twos and threes, uh, and it only goes, even though it's a six-sided die, only goes up to one, all right? And then they're going to must do, may do, probably won't be able to do, but might. And then we're going to move these numbers so that they change their, uh, the Automa changes its action whenever it places workers. So that's kind of the gist. And we're gonna alternate turns until a festival takes place, and then do the festival, do it again, do a festival, do it again, do a festival, go into final scoring, and there you go, okay? All right, so I think the next thing that I will do is I'll go through the setup a little bit of the Automa here. And I realized just now looking at this, that this almost looks like a, a white, it's kind of a pale sky blue, so that's why the Automa down right there says the Automa is blue, so. It is, take my word for it. It's a lot more blue here than I think it is on the screen. All right, anyway, so the setup. Place the Automa board here, set it up as a two-player game with a couple of exceptions. Uh, when Gain is starting weaving, the Axomama, i.e. the Automa, uh, gains a random starting weaving tile before I get to pick mine, but okay, that's fine, uh, which is these are the four starting uh, uh, weavings. I'm going to call these textiles weavings. Th that's these. Uh, they do not get a starting hand of God cards. Instead, they get two stone, two corn, a gold, and an army card face down, which I don't know what that is. All right. They get two random workers, just like I do. So we did randomly draw. I got the green and white, and they got a green and yellow. There are five different colors. As you can see out here on the board, there are five different colors of workers. Uh, I'm going to place my high priest first, then roll the die. Um, and I now that I think about this, let me see, do I get my card, my hand of cards first? Uh, let me see when, I believe I do get my cards first. So I'm going to get eight God cards. So before we go any further, we're going to actually shuffle those up. 
and I will do my best to, I am not always going to make these visible, I don't think, but this is not a perfect uh, system here, but a moment. Oh, wow. Okay. This is going to be interesting. All right. So take a look here. Ooh, that's, that's a little zoomed. There we go. And that's, that's all right. That'll work. So the God cards, I get eight of these. I get to keep three and then discard five. And the five that I discard, I can, I get whatever the benefit is. So for instance, gain an army card, gain a weaving, gain three potatoes, a potato and a worker. And I believe the worker there is from the village. Let me double check real quick. Uh, from the nomads, check that. Uh, but I'm, yeah, that actually works. Uh, gain a victory point, gain two stone, gain a stone and gain the, a small statue. Uh, hmm. Choices, choices. Now I realize if you guys did not see the original playthrough of this, that you're going to have a little bit harder time understanding what, uh, why I would keep certain ones. And I'll try and explain that as best I can uh, as I go along here. But that said, um, I'm gonna start with three. God, I don't think I start with any army cards either. Let me double check, make sure I'm not, uh, I don't believe I do. Give me a second. I'm looking. No, I do not. All right, cool, good, all right. Oh, apparently uh, there's no solo info out there really. So this will be the first one, good, all right, cool, that works. So no, I do not get any, um, any army cards to start with. So give me just a second. Yeah, okay, all right, so I think I think I'm going to keep this card in my hand and I'm going to play that one. And I'll explain why here. I'm going to get a stone and I'm going to get that god, that statue, sorry, not that god, that statue. So I'm going to take this statue and you guys don't actually need to see these anymore. So my stuff again is going to go over there and I get a stone, okay? And the reason is, is whenever I play this card from my hand, I'm going to get the bottom of that anyways, because that symbol matches that statue. So that kind of makes sense. So that's going to be one that I've played. And I think... I think I will go ahead and get more stone here. So I will go ahead and take two stone and a victory point. So that's gonna be two of those. So I will put more stone over here and we're crushing the automa to start with. That's good, cause I'm gonna need that. That's two. Then, honestly, I wanna keep a variety of symbols if I can just for the simple fact that uh, getting, having options is going to be good for me, but I think keeping these two in my hand, since I'm going to get both of those, are going to be a good option there. And between these two, which one do I want the most? Since I don't start with any army cards in my hand, um, I'm going to be able to get three or, or three potatoes early, so I'm not worried about that. So I think I'll go ahead and spend that one. And so that's going to get me, this one is going to get me one potato, two potato, three potato more, and one from the nomads. And then from this, I'm thinking, I kind of like the fact that the board is already seeded out here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take that blue one. Now, normally you're only allowed to have two workers, two meeples over here, but it's only checked at the end of your turn. And since this is the start of the game, I believe I can do that. So there we go, all right. Oh, hey, what's up, David? All right, cool. So that is three. We have two more that we can get rid of. 
and in fact that we must get rid of. So I think we'll go ahead and start with an extra weaving. Okay, I'm gonna keep this card for sure. I think this one is okay for me to get rid of, even though it's a new symbol and the four points really isn't terribly important to start with. Points are always, I mean, points are points, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll get four more points. So that's gonna be a fourth card. There. Uh, yeah, and then whenever you gain a weaving, and I think even at the start, I'm double checking uh, for purchasing a weaving. I believe you still draw three from the top um, and then choose one because the game did say at the beginning, or for the Automa, that whenever, when gaining a starting weaving, they get a random starting weaving tile before I pick mine. So technically, they should have already gotten one. So, Peanut Gallery, pick a number one through four. And that's gonna be their starting weaving. So we should probably do that first. So, pick a number one through four when we get two of them, all right? Oh yeah, I, do, I totally was asking for a classic ink and thumping, David, definitely. I have no doubt that the, the uh, Axo Mama is going to whoop me, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So shout out to uh, Nick, or I'm sorry, David says, uh, shout out to my usual helper, Nick Shaw, and all the solo testers for the amazing work they've done. Good. I'm glad that uh, David's here for when I screw stuff up with the Automa. He will be able to tell me what an idiot I am and uh, fix that. So that's good. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Hey, you know what? We're getting started. Why don't we uh, bring up the camera in the chat here? There we go. Hey, cool. There. Really? How did you guys nail four different numbers with four people? Come on. Somebody. There we go. Number four it is. It's going to be the bottom one. So the Automa, and again, you guys don't really need to see these right now, or period. So the Automa is going to go... Like so, that's going to be their starting weaving, okay? So for us, uh, the fact that this one's already out here, I'm not going to choose that one. Um, so they have... Uh, go to, uh, um, yeah, I'll go and take this guy. So I will grab that starting weaving to begin with. These two are out of the game. And then, getting back to this, I think I will go ahead and spend that card as my last of the, of the uh, five that are in my hand. So these will be my starting hand of cards. Uh, and I think I'm okay with that, I think so. So I'm going to get, we're gonna draw three weavings. One, two, and three. We have the one that's flipped. And then I can choose one of those to begin with. And what we're looking at here is a couple things. For weaving our tapestries here, they have, and I believe that there are seven of a type, or seven of uh, different types. And a weaving can never have multiple of the same type. So having this one would mean I would have to choose, start a second tapestry. And I really don't want to do that to begin with. But these two do connect. Yeah, it's not terrible. None of them actually match up the ends for a market action, unfortunately. But I think what I will do is I will go ahead and do like so. So I have a two-part tapestry right now there. And if these had joined up, whenever I get a market action, I would then be able to get whatever the bonus is for that. But as it is, I do not get that because, well, they don't match up. And I wouldn't get it right now. I would get it down the road, okay, whenever I take or I get a, a market action. So... I now have those cards in my hand, all right? So let's continue with the rest of the setup. So they got the workers. Uh, now, I'm, now that I have these cards in my hand, now we're gonna remember what these symbols are, and I think what we will do is we will actually move these out. Oops, there we go. That was weird. We'll go ahead and put these right here. 
So now I'm going to be able to place my high priest out here. Now what, what I'm looking at is not only the symbol that I'm going to be placing it on, because it's going to be a while until I can come back around to that, but also whenever I place it out here, it's going to make it cheaper to be able to, possibly free, to take the actions that are out here for the various actions as well as adjacent and further down on the terraces. So what I'm leaning towards, because I have a blue worker and I have the, the squiggly line and kind of the, uh, the cross symbol over here, I see a blue cross, that's going to be a really good one for me. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now is this one here, I like that symbol. I have a green with a squig. You know what? I've talked myself into it. I'm going to go ahead and place my high priest there. Then we're going to roll the die for where the automa is going to place their uh, high priest. So that's going to be number two. All right. And that's going to be the number of spaces clockwise from my high priest equal to the value. So it's going to be one, two. So the automa is going to start there and they start with a free step already built in the location directly where they are like so, okay? Oh, it's Imogen. All right. So I guess, oh, that, that actually was the one. So that actually worked out. So if that's the case, then we will go there and we'll bury that one there. That's the order in which they came out. That works out. Good. Then we place the eight numbered tokens over here on the automa. So you can see three goes on to three, one goes on to one, two goes on to two, so on and so forth over all over all the spaces. I went ahead and drew the four God cards at random and put them up there for the automa up there. And now, Peanut Gallery, you guys need to choose one of the two. And I will go and put these right here so you guys can see these. It's personality, okay? So, I am going to, so these are the two possible uh, personalities. In addition to that, they have backsides to them, okay? So you guys can see it. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you guys pick top or bottom. And then I'm just going to flip it up in the air on whatever side it lands on. That's going to be its personality of that. Okay. So pick top or bottom. Okay. So you guys choose that. And then uh, we'll flip that and then we can get started. Oh, and the, uh, the Automa does scale a little bit. We're playing just the baseline. You can make it a little easier. You can make it a little harder. Uh, if I remember to talk about that, you know what? I'll do that now while you guys are picking top or bottom. Um, basically, David says, if you're able to win by a large margin, 25 points or more, probably ought to scale up the difficulty. And if you're struggling with it, you can scale it down. Increasing the uh, difficulty, um, it has... A list, you know, it'd be easier to show it this way, right here, of scaling it down or scaling it up, depending on how sick you want to be over there. Okay, so it looks like uh, bottom one. Okay, so the bottom one is going to get chosen, so that one's going to be out of the game. Okay, and we're just going to flip this up. That was pretty pretty valid flip right there. So here we go. It's going to be weaving and gold that will go into that space right there. And I think that works to show you guys that. There you go. So it goes into that little location right there. Okay, all right, cool. So now we are ready to finally begin. All right, I have my hand of cards. Uh, the automa is completely set up. Let me double check, make sure I didn't forget anything. Good, done. Um, you're the starting player. Players uh, play turns normally. Axamama plays its turns in a slightly different way, and boy, does it. All right, so I'm going to leave that open because I'm going to need that. But let's go ahead and look at now on my, for my turn. Okay, so here we go. So on our turn, we're either going to place a worker or perform two different secondary actions, which may include moving the high priest and doing all of those things. And then you'll notice the worker limit 
at the end of our turn, we can recruit at the end of our turn. We can purchase a single worker from either end of the village, paying a corn or a, a potato or a corn. And then the two workers enforced at the end of your turn. And any you have extra are just removed from the game. Okay. So what we're going to do for the majority of the turns, I would argue, is place a worker. So we're going to play a matching god card, okay, which may trigger effects of statues, which on our first turn probably will not, but that's okay. Um, or you could pay a gold in lieu of playing a god card to carry out, uh, basically it becomes a wild god, the, the gold is. Gold is a wild resource. And then take a number of tasks, one for, every, for the worker you place, uh, plus any worker abilities, plus one for every adjacent worker of the same color. All right. So let's take a look at this. So I have these three cards. I have no gold in my hand, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the blue worker over here and I'm not gonna spell it out as detailed except in the first turn or so, except for the Automa, because I think you guys will get uh, the gist of what it is I'm gonna be doing on my turn after a couple of actions. So I'm gonna take the blue worker. My high priest is up here and because it is in this section over here. There is no cost associated. If I wanted to, let's move that out of the way. If I wanted to take an action on a lower terrace and there is no step here, it's going to cost me two food. And the food will be either corn or potatoes. So two resources to be able to place in this section down here, okay, or this terrace in that section. If I wanted to go further down and there's still no steps, this would cost me five to place a worker down here. Now, if I wanted to move to say place up here instead to either of the adjacent sides, that would be one food. And if I wanted to play in one of the two that were further all the way behind me, it would cost me three food. So theoretically, if I wanted to place say right, oh, you guys can't see that. If I wanted to place all the way over here and my high priest is here, there are no steps there. It's going to be three to be behind, another two to go down onto that terrace, and a total and five to get down here. That is going to be prohibitively expensive to be able to place a worker here while it's here, while my high priest is there. Now, for every step that you go down, now I cannot come over here, go down these steps, then come over. It doesn't work that way. It's, are there steps where you're placing the worker? If there are steps, each step removes two food costs for each one. So if there was a step here and a step here, and I wanted to place this worker here, it would actually only cost me one food because minus two, minus two, it would cost five. Total of four reduction, it only costs one. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? All right, but as it is, I'm going to go ahead and place under this symbol right here, which happens to match up with this card right here. Now, I do not have a statue that has that symbol, because remember, my statue is the one with the little squiggly lightning bolt looking one there, which does not match that symbol. So what that means is I don't get the benefit, I don't get the bonus of what's on the bottom of the card. Okay, no big deal, but it allows me to place a worker on a space that matches that symbol. Then when I place there, if the space has a color that matches the color of the meeple or the worker, I get one additional action. So you're always going to get one for placing the worker there. And when I place there, I can take this action, this action, or this action of the three that are surrounding that worker. Now, because it is on the same color, as the worker I placed, I actually get an additional action, which means I can take two of those three actions. And in addition to that, if there are any workers that are directly adjacent to the worker I just placed of the same color, you get a plus one for each of those. So you'll notice that this worker is directly adjacent to this one connected via the little paths that you can see right there. So in that case, that means I get one for placing, one for matching the color on the place, and I get one for an adjacent meeple of the same color, which means I get to do that, that, and that. What I cannot do is do multiples of any of these individual actions. If, let's say, 
and I'm trying to look for a good example. Here we go. Let me grab one of these that's out of the game. If there was a blue meeple that was there already and I placed that, I would get one for placing, another for matching the color, then I would get one for each additional worker that's out there for a total of four actions. But you'll notice I'm only surrounded ever by three available actions. What that means is I can go one, two, three, or one, two, three, or one, two, however, whatever order I wanna do them. And then once I've done that, then I can double up on a second action because I have a fourth action, if it's possible, if you're able to do so, et cetera, et cetera. I hope all that makes sense. I'm not gonna explain it in that detail again, but there you go. So, as I said, I'm going to get one action for placing, another action for the matching color, and another one for there. And I should point out that these were randomly seeded out here on the board per the setup instructions at the beginning of the game for a two-player game. So that's why those are like that. That said, I get to get two stone. Okay, that's pretty simple. I get three potatoes. That's pretty simple. And then I get to build a, a building. So let's take a moment and take a look now. I now have five stone and four potatoes over here, okay? So let's take a look down here at the bottom of the board, and there are four buildings out here. Two are production buildings, which have the little uh, 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 Inca here with a sack on their back, and then the infinity symbol means they are just ongoing rule breaker ones uh, that uh, will benefit whoever owns it, whether it's you or Automa or another player or whatever. Well, you'll notice that the cost up here in the top right hand corner, it is a stone and a corn. Um, I don't have any corn, yo. So we're not building either of those. So we're gonna build one of those two. And production is, whenever you produce, you get whatever is pictured. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? So I would get a gold and a potato or two corn. And I don't have any corn. I'm gonna want some corn. Let's go ahead and get this one. So it's gonna cost us a potato and a stone. So boom, boom, that goes back into the supply. I now have a building and I have some space over here. So we're gonna go ahead and put my building right there. So I have gotten stone, potato, and I built a building. That's all my actions, I'm done. Pretty simple, I think, okay. Oh Christ, that's building steps, isn't it? My bad. Oh, I looked at the wrong symbol. Oh, hold on, let me show you guys why I screwed this up already. I wish somebody would have chimed in a little earlier. All right, build a building, build steps. My bad. So disregard the building of the building that I did. Let me get my potato and stone back. Apparently it's too early for me to try and stream games. Who knew? All right, well instead, let's move up to the top of the board. <laughs> <laughs> up here for building steps. It's going to cost three stone. So take my word for it. I just paid my three stone and then I can build steps. I can build steps anywhere on the board that I wish. And when you build steps, you're going to get two potatoes, a corn and four points. And if there is a uh, step above where you're building it, the owner of that step will get two points. So in other words, if I built steps right here, uh, the Automo would get two points. Well, I'm obviously going to help myself, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. So it's gonna get me two potatoes, a corn, there, and four points. Ugh, glad you guys are on here, thank you. All right, so that was my last action. So now the Automo goes. Okay, so where is the Automa? The Automa is here on Conquest, so it has Rejuvenation, and I'm trying to remember what the name of that is. That is, let me find, let me remember what the name of that action is, the second one. Uh, let's see, that is an Offering? Yes, so either Rejuvenation or Offering there. So let's take a look at the Automa, okay? All right, so first thing, so we're gonna look at rejuvenation. If it has three face down buildings or army cards? Well, it has one face down 
All right, I'm sorry, it does not. This is in its hand. So it does not have both of those. But the corn one, if it has four or more corn, it does not have four or more corn. So therefore, it's not going to do a high priest action. So instead, it's going to do a board action, okay? Because remember, it's going to try and do one of these, and if it can't, then, oh no, there we go. All right. So, if it doesn't trigger a high priest action, and it has at least one at worker, it has two, so good to go, it'll place a worker on the board and perform an action. If it has multiple workers, pick from its uh, oldest, so I'm going to go left or right, so newest, whenever I place a new worker, it's going to go to the left and slide these to the right. So we're gonna say the yellow worker here, or if it's the first placement, uh, pick randomly, I'm just gonna continue and do it on the right hand side here. To place a worker, we're gonna roll a die and select one of the four god cards tucked underneath the board to select. So one, two, three, or four. So we will roll, that's gonna be a three. So it's going to be that one right there. All right, so now the Axo Mama finds a space on the main board that matches the god symbol of the selected card, prioritizing the top terrace of the hill before the first festival during the second, or in the second round and third round, okay? Uh, so first terrace, so up here at the top, it's going to look for the little sideways G. There are obviously plenty of G spaces. There's there, 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 et cetera, okay? If multiple valid spaces exist, which they are, it chooses with the lowest combined descending and roaming cost. Descending cost is the cost of food going this way. Roaming is off to the side. Well, obviously, this is going to be the spot that is going to have the lowest cost because it would cost it zero, right? Now, here's the thing. Um, it doesn't actually pay the roaming cost. It cheats. So it's going to take a yellow worker. It's going to place it right there, okay? Then if, if there are no spaces, there's a, there's a rule for that, but I'm not gonna worry about that, all right? It doesn't pay the roaming and descending costs. Discard the chosen God card from its board to the central offer. So we're gonna take that God card, move it over here into the offer. Oh, by the way, should I put out any, uh, a moment? I should have shuffled those in, by the way. We're just gonna do like so, that's fine. Um, and there should be three of these out there already. So forget about that. Last part is set up, two and three. And that'll be the new one that they just put out. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get back to this now. and draw a new god card from the top of the deck to replace it, okay? So we're then going to put that in there into the three spot, okay? So we're gonna keep that handy because that's still going. Then it performs all the actions on the number that it rolled top to bottom. So it rolled a three. So we're gonna do this action and that action if at all possible. Okay, the actions on the top, and let's go ahead and get this ready so I can walk you guys through it. Top ones require no payment. That's, I mean, it's pretty simple. You get whatever is shown there, right? You're, or it gets, I should say. Potatoes, corn, stone, a tapestry, I'm sorry, a weaving. I knew I was gonna do it. Uh, uh, and a gold or stone or corn, whichever it has the least of, okay? So in this case, three potatoes. So that's pretty cut and dried. I think that's pretty simple. Take my word for it, I gave it three potatoes and boom, done, okay? Actions in the middle row require payment. If it can't be fully paid for and fully performed, i.e. It can't, it can't afford to build uh, a building, then it doesn't, it doesn't do it, it just gains a gold instead. So you know what, as a reminder, 
I'm gonna put a gold up here just as a little reminder to myself that if it can't do whatever action it calls for, it gets a gold instead. So you'll notice that there is no three up there. So because it rolled a three, it's not gonna actually do a middle action in that case, okay? The one on the bottom, however, uh, it says is free, but can be impossible to, to perform, whatever those are, okay? All right? And it actually walks through what all of the actions are over here, and we'll go over that here in a minute. Um, and then it moves all the matching numbered tokens forward clockwise, a number of spaces equal to the token's value. So I rolled a three, so it's going to move it three. Okay, all the number three tokens, three spaces. So in other words, this is going to go one, two, they can double up like that, and three. So next time I roll a three, that's going to happen. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Now over here for these actions, let me go ahead and go over each of these. Uh, I'm not gonna go over them in detail, just the ones that uh, I, I, I think the top ones are pretty self-explanatory. Build steps, all right? Uh, builds a building and produces. Uh, this one is buys a large statue if possible, otherwise a small a small statue. Um, this is build a this is build a production building, build a uh, ongoing building, and get a weaving on that. Okay, or purchases weavings, I should say. And then over here, this one is takes a worker from the potato side of the village. I'll explain that when we get there. Takes a worker from the corn side of the village, gains two points. Takes an army card face down into its hand. And then this one is takes a random worker from the nomads. Okay, pretty simple, right? So here, take an army card face down into its hand. Army card face down into its hand. It now has two. Okay, so then this one has to move three spaces. One, two, and three. There you go. That's its turn. Pretty, pretty cut and dried, I think, right? Pretty simple. Okay, so it's my turn. All right. Cool. Let me get some tea. How y'all doing today? So let's see. We built steps, which actually I kind of wanted to do anyways. So looking out here on the board... I could place here to be able to get a, a couple of actions that'll get me some potatoes or a, another uh, weaving. I could place here, even though it's a different color, I would still get an additional action when I did so. And that would get me the building that I wanted to build. Hmm. I have enough potatoes, so I think and the white one, I think that actually works. That would give me two actions and then the blue can still, I guess it doesn't matter, does it? I guess I ought to use the green first to do that and then that. That'll work, okay. So one other thing that I didn't mention yet is whenever you place workers, the color of the worker is going to dictate whatever bonus it gets whenever it gets placed out there, okay? Pretty, pretty cut and dried. The blue and the green are pretty straightforward, so those are the ones that we started with. The, the white one, take a god from the offer or the top of the deck and you can pay exactly one to gain plus one task. So pay one uh, potato to gain an extra task. So if I played the white, the priest, I could do so, or the green, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the green one, however, okay? All right, so actually, I. by the way, I, I realized that there can only be three cards out here at one time, so when the Automa placed this, it should have reset that, so there. Those will go to the bottom of the deck. I think what we will do I don't have enough corn quite yet. 
to do everything I want to do. So I think I will go place the green there and then the white there. Yeah. No, the white here because then I can pay. Yeah. So I'm actually going to place the white, the priest over here in the bottom right. So when I do so, placing under this location normally would cost me two. But because I'm going down steps, it's free for me to place. So when I place this, I get to take a God card from the offer, meaning this one specifically, or top of the deck. Let's go ahead and just top deck it. Yeah, well, that worked out. Okay. So I'll place that there. I'm going to spend this card to be able to go onto there, but because I have a matching statue, I actually get the three potatoes that's at the bottom. That'll work. So that card is now, by the way, that goes out here. It doesn't get straight discarded. It goes into the offer there. Okay. So I got a God from the offer because it's a priest. And then I can pay one potato to get a, an additional task. So because I don't have the matching color and there are no others around it, I would normally only get one task. But I'll go ahead and pay one of my newly gained potatoes and take a second task. So I still don't have enough corn to be able to do the tapestry here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the two stone. And then, for real this time, I'm going to build a building. And I'm going to build the exact same building that I tried to build earlier, which is going to be that, and that'll be a potato and a stone. And that'll be both my actions. Then, now that I have less than two workers over here, I then can come over here to the village. So let's take a look a little bit closer at the village over here. That, the village is this line of meeples. You'll notice corn side, potato side, okay? So if I wish to spend a corn, which I do, I do have one corn, I can grab that warrior. If I wish to spend a potato, I could grab that priest. And you know what? Because of the draw and everything else, I think I will go ahead and spend one potato, and I'll go ahead and grab that priest over here, there. And now, remember, the trigger for the festival is when this bad boy is empty, so that we're kind of choosing our own timing of this, okay? All right, so that is the end of my turn, because remember, at the end, you can recruit from the village, paying a corn or, or a potato or corn. Okay, cool. And now I'm at my limit, so I can't, uh, you can only do that once. But if I had recruited and I had to, I would immediately lose it. That would be bad. But all right, that's it. So same rules. Their high priest has not moved. So do they have three face down buildings? No. Do they have four or more corn? No. All right. So then they're going to take an action. So we will roll the die for the automa. And that's going to be a two. So first things first, walk through the steps. All right. So because it cannot take a high priest action, all right, it's going to do that action, which is another G. It is clearly, uh, hold on one second. We're, excuse me, got the hiccups all of a sudden. All right. So it's going to take its oldest worker, which is its only worker, and it's going to look for a G symbol on the top terrace. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. Well, this one would only cost one to go off to the side. This one would only cost one to go off to the side. So when tied, uh, choose randomly between the two options. Even, odd. So I think I said even, odd, so this will go up there, so the green will go there. All right, but he rolled a two, so let's keep it honest. All right. And you know what? Now that we have that, I'm actually going to bring this out a little bit so you guys can also see the resources whenever I do this. There we go. I think that works out better. So, roll the two. So, he's going to gain two stone. 
there. Then the second one is build a build steps. Okay, so let's take a look uh, over here. Build, you know, builds it uh, in the high priest section if it can. Otherwise, next section's clockwise in a valid spot. Avoids building under yours, so it doesn't give me victory points. In other words, um, if possible, uh, to build elsewhere. And then the Axo Mama always prefer prefers to build upper steps if possible. So. Again, the cost is going to be three stone. He has three stone. So he's going to spend his three stone. He is going to build some steps. Let me grab some steps. And he's going to build below it. And he's going to gain two points for doing so. There. Uh, check. Uh, He's going to gain two points for this, but he's going to gain four more for that. So it's going to be there. Okay. And he's going to gain two potatoes and a corn. Make sure. Give me one second. Yeah, done. All right, cool. So that was this action. Then over here, this one, which is number two. Hold on, let me uh, bring it back. There. And that one is uh, take a worker from the potato side of the village. And whenever taking any worker, he gains a color based recruiting reward as shown on the board. Right. So I need to double check whether or not he pays to do that. I believe he does pay for it. So he is going to gain from the potato side. So he's going to discard a potato and potato side that. Now, nothing else matters about the color of this worker except here on the bottom of the screen or the bottom of his board. Okay. And let me, there we go. I think that works out better. There we go. All right, so a green worker says he gains a corn when he does so. Now, let me double check on the steps. If it can, Auto uh, Axo Mama builds steps between the top and middle terrace in the section where the high priest is between the top and middle, right. Otherwise move clockwise. Oh, then it moves down. You are correct. So technically it would build here first, then it goes here. And then if all of those, then it would come down here. So fair point. So he backs up two points. There we go. Good call. Good call. All right. All right. Give me just a moment. You know what? Actions in the bottom row require no payment, so I gave him his potato back. And if an action can't be performed on the bottom row, then he just skips it. All right, so now we rolled the two, so it's going to go one, two, one, two, one, two. There we go. So he has done everything and he is done. Okay. All right. Back to our turn. Um, I like the idea of gaining a couple of corn that would gain me. Oh, wow. That, oh, Hmm. 
Let me double check one more thing. Oh, I should have refilled the Nomad, by the way, when I took that earlier. Oh, there we go. All right. The only other thing that I'm trying to find, and Christopher, you can help, is when did the buildings refresh? That I can't remember. I apologize. Yep, it, at the end of your turn. So that should have come out there. All right, the reason that matters is because I'm thinking about going right there with the white one, and I think we are. I think we are gonna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my white worker, my priest, to go ahead and come out here. So I will place that right here. It's free because I'm going down steps there. So I'm going to get one for placing it, I get to take a card from either the offer here. I cannot play, uh, grab the one that I just played or top deck. And I'm good with that. I think I will actually take that one back into my hand. There. All right. Then I have the statue, so I'm going to gain two corn and a point. For that. Take my word for it that I took the point. Okay. And now I get to take one action because I placed it, one action because it's adjacent, and I could actually take the third action by paying a potato. So I will go ahead and pay one potato to take all three actions. So I'll gain two stone, I'll gain two corn. there, and then build the building. So let's take a look at the buildings again. And now we have a plethora Efe, of corn. So all four buildings are in play for me. This one is, uh, oh, at the beginning of a festival, I'm going to get four corn, which I'm going to have to pay potentially for God cards in my hand. And then at the end of the game, I'm going to get an extra point for every God card that's in my hand. So that's, that's kind of nice. This is during conquest, uh, whenever somebody takes the conquest uh, action with their high priest, I get a gold and a point. Eh. Honestly, in looking at these, I'm leaning towards this or this. Oh, choices, choices. If I'm going to take it, I probably ought to take it now. So, it's a ton of potato. Nope, I'm going to go with this one. So, it's going to be there. So, it would be two potatoes and a stone. There. And done. That's my three actions, and this will come out. Oh, by the way, hold on. I forgot to draw for him, didn't I? This should have come out. Ah, that's the third card, and this should have gone in there. Step one, right? I think. Okay, good. All right. Hey, Kenna. Yeah, oh, uh, Temujin just actually said that, so there you go. All right. So, uh... His high priest hasn't moved. He doesn't have three face down cards or army cards. And the description, by the way, of face down for that, for the uh, high priest is, and that's technically in its hand, okay? As opposed to having them face down. All right. So not that, uh, but, but does have four or more corn. So therefore, because he has, there we go. 
because he does have four or more corn, he's going to actually do the high priest action. So let's look up here and let's see what the do. We're not even going to roll, so it's not going to have to do anything with the cards at the top. Do it as much as it can afford. Okay, all right. That's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. So, perform as if in a multiplayer game, Axamama offers more ships as much as it can for the standard cost. All right, so it's an offering. It's going to spend two, four, or six corn to move up one, two, or three steps on the temple track and then get whatever it says. So... He has four corn, as much as it can, it's going to be two steps. So it's going to spend all four of its corn. Oh, one other thing real quick. The, this is going to be the hardest thing for me to remember, and I'm going to need the peanut gallery to help me with, is any time, whenever... Axomama has five or more potatoes in its supply. It turns in five for five victory points until it has less than five. So it's going to turn in all five of those, and it's going to gain five victory points. Somebody's closer. All right, so he's going to move up two steps, okay? And then when it does so, it gets all the benefits when moving up the temple track except for drawing god cards, okay? Um, but it does something else. Um, it, it's going to instead remove the oldest God card in the offer, place it at the bottom of the deck, and score a point. In other words, it's going to remove that card there and gain a point. But here, so he's going to gain a potato. He's going to gain, well, there you go. So this is going to go away there, and he'll gain a point. There we go. Then... He's going to look at two, in theory, what normally happens is look at two army cards and then take one, but he doesn't care. He's just going to take one and put it into his hand, like so. There we go. That's his uh, benefits for doing so, okay? Okay. All right, cool. So he's done. Let me just make sure I don't forget anything. There is one other little gotcha in here that I want to go reread. Oh, and because he met the condition of that, he's going to move to that location as well. There was that. And when it performs a high priest action, it draws an army card, putting it face down there, and discards up to two god cards from the central offer, discarding the oldest two if there are three to choose from. But it doesn't, dis it doesn't get any points for doing so. So there we go. Okay, there we go. What I'm looking for is it specifies about uh, face down when it comes to that. Let me look here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. By the way, I'm drinking uh, candy, K-A-N-D-Y, from Smith Tees today. Mm, I cannot find it. I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Cool. So, my turn. Um... Should have recruited last turn. I realized that. Yep, I should have. 
I should have recruited, but I did not. All right. Um, so what do we have? We have a couple of squigglies still. So this would be a total of three food to come down there, but it would, it would give me two of those actions which would allow me to get corn and then build weavings. Not a terrible idea. Or I could come over here. I forgot to replenish the building again. Is it worth it for the one food? I would get two actions. I would get... It would allow me to then build that. Yeah, I think maybe so. All right, I will. So I will go ahead and place this green worker. And the green worker obviously gets me no benefit going there. And I think I will go ahead and play that one. So that's going to get me the face-up weaving here, which will match there. So whenever I get a market action, I will be able to get a god card and a potato. So that's good. Oh, no, that's a, ah, damn it. I didn't even see it's the same type. Um, uh, hold on. Gaining a free weaving, I want to double check about whenever you gain a weaving, is it only the face up one or can you top deck? technically just says gain a free weaving. I believe that you can draw off the top. I believe so. You may take the face-up tile or the tile beneath the face-up tile at your description. Right. Okay. There you go. So I can. Good. I can top deck it. Well, that, that worked out really well. So it's going to start a second weaving. Okay. Fine. 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 Grr. All right. So we just placed this one so I get two actions because one for placing it and then another because I'm adjacent here and I will go and build the building and let's go and grab two stone but I'm going to go ahead and spend one of the stone that I gain and just so I'll get a stone and pay a corn and I'll go and grab that passive building there all right boom done that's my action. Now, I am going to recruit. I'm not going to forget to do so this time. So I will go ahead and recruit that one. There. Done. All right. So now the game's turn. So now, here for production and for building statues. This one we haven't looked at yet. So production, does he have two face-up or two or more face-up buildings? No, he has none. Or... Uh, I believe that is, can he build one or more statues? Let me double check. So 
So I'm reading the, uh, the available actions on this, and that is perform it uh, as if in a multiplayer game. So can it build multiple statues? They cost three stone or three stone and two gold. So he cannot. So therefore, he's going to roll. So here we go. First things first. So he rolled the three. We're going to go ahead and put that down here. Want to make sure I get all the steps right this time. All right. The squiggly for him, wherever he is, so it's going to be two of those random, so it'll be odd, even. So it'll be this one here, put that back to a three. It's got to be that worker. There, okay. Draw a new one, make sure I don't forget that this time. All right, so he rolled a three. So he's going to gain a weaving and a gold. So the gold, pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory on that one. The weaving, however, is, I just, I, so this says take a weaving from free from the top of the weaving stack. So technically it would be like this. So he's going to grab this one there. Okay, so that one's done. Then we come down here, there is nothing there. No three on that one, but there is a three on this one, which he's going to take a worker from the village, from the corn end. And remember, he does not have to pay for that. So from the corn end, he's going to get a warrior there. Now, whenever he gains the warrior, he's gonna gain an army card. All right, so now all of the threes are going to advance three spots. One, two, three. So now, if he rolls a one or a three, he's going to do that. Nothing there, and one, two, and three there. All right? Done. Okay, our turn. Oh, I need army cards. So the question is, do I pay that? I think we're going to actually take a priest action, I think. So let's take a look at this. So that is right here, moving the high pre or two different of these, okay? So I'm leaning towards praying and probably training as well. I think so, because I need more God cards. I only have one. I need a variety of different ones at this point. I do have the ability that could trigger the end. I think we will. Don't want to, I have no, yeah, yeah. We're going to go ahead and pray and train. So I'm going to draw two uh, God cards. So the first one we draw and you can do these in any order, that's unfortunate. So there, not really what I was hoping for, for more of that symbol. And because I don't want either of those, I'll take that. So there we go, okay. All right, so there's that. Then the army cards, I'm gonna draw two, keep one. And the army cards have multiple, either one or two army figures on them, and then you can always discard army cards for the bottom symbol uh, in lieu, uh, as a bonus action on your turn. So obviously I will keep that in my hand with the two, like so. And then this will go, just put it at the bottom, that's fine. Okay, all right. And do I want to recruit? I think I'm gonna. I'm going to go ahead and pay, ooh, I have three God cards in my hand. 
because I won't get another turn. I am not going to recruit that worker because I'm not in a position to be ready to, uh, to go into a festival. I will at the end of next turn, though. All right, so the Automa goes. So the Automa, again, same two actions. He has two gold. Uh, he doesn't have three face-up buildings, so he's just going to roll. Rolls a three. So he's going to get two corn. Nothing on this one. And this one is he's going to uh, take a random worker from the Nomad. Uh, so one, two, three, four. We'll just, that's fine. I realize the one and four is unlikely, but well, there you go. So that was where he did a three. So he's going to grab this one. We automatically refill that. Really, there are different colors, I promise. There really are in this bag. See, just random draw. Forgot to replenish this. Okay, freely change corn, gold, and, or two corn, two stone, and gold, by the way. Uh, all right, so that is done. He just gained a yellow worker. A yellow worker is a potato in one point. There we go. And now rolling, uh, moving to three. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. There. Done. All right. Our turn. <sighs> uh, I don't have a gold. Yes. Yeah. The fact that we only have, well, so we do have two armies, so I'm actually looking at the conquest over here, but if I do so, then I'm not going to be able to recruit, <laughs> so I guess we're not going to advance, so I am going to play that. Yeah, all right. So we are going to go ahead and play that card. It's going to come and go. I was thinking about going here, but honestly, to be able to get the army cards might be better. Yeah, so I'm going to go onto that location, and when I do so, Remember, with a priest, I can take a god card. I can't take the same one that I just chose, and I don't want any more of that symbol. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and top deck. So there we go. There. And then I can pay one potato to go ahead and take an additional action. So I can take this, this, or this action. And I could make a case for... I don't need the potato. I think I'm going to pay a potato, and I think I'm going to do both of those actions. So I'll do the army one first. Well, all right. They are identical, so it doesn't matter. So I'll just grab one of those. That's in my hand. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and build some steps. And again, building steps is going to cost us three stone. So we'll spend our three stone. We're going to get two potatoes and a corn in four points, we know that for sure. But the question is, if we build here, we'll get two extra points, but does it make sense to build somewhere else that we might be moving to? I think we're just gonna go ahead and build steps there because that now frees that up for us. If we choose not to move, for our next action, and that'll be uh, that'll only cost us one food to get down here because we have steps there. So that's and it's going to get an, an extra two points, so it'll be six points all day. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then I will recruit that last worker now because it's in the middle. I can do corn or potato. I'll go ahead and spend a potato. And there, and now, because there are no villagers left over here, I'm going to go ahead and get, I'll go ahead and just put it right here, one point immediately 
for taking that. And the festival will trigger before my next turn. So it's the Automa's turn now. And for the statues, uh, I forget the cost of the statues. A moment. For worship, it is... Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. Um, no, actually, I... The high priest action is discarding statues. That's it, not building them. So he's not going to do that. And conquest is more available soldiers than number of casualties of war. Soldiers on face-up army cards plus one soldier per army card. Yeah, that's me. That's him. Sorry. Producing in here. Never mind. Getting ahead of myself. Hi, Jester. Lars, Christopher, nice. All right. Um, right. So he has to have one or more statues. He doesn't. And the other one is producing two or more face-up production buildings. He doesn't have any. So he's not doing that. So he's rolling every day. All right. So a two. So he's getting stone or corn. What does he have least of? He has no stone. So we'll grab two stone. Then here is building statues. Building statues, and this one, I suppose I ought to show you guys on that. Building statues costs three stone, uh, which he can do because he has gold for a large. And let me look over here for here. Uh, buys a large statue if possible, otherwise a small one it doesn't have. Uh, that's for board actions. Um, yeah, board actions. This is it. Yeah. So he is going to build a small statue using a gold because gold, it does say he uses. Let me double check, make sure I'm not lying to you. It doesn't use gold as a wild for uh, the five potatoes for five points, but it does for all other purposes. All right. So in other words, he is going to do that action. So he is going to, here, he's going to build a statue. It's going to be a small statue, so it's going to be two stone and a gold. And whenever he builds that, make sure of one he doesn't have, but here you go. Um, to determine which roll a die to uh, select one of its tuck god cards. It does not discard the god. Okay, right. Forgot that step again. This will come out. It replaces those. That will go there. Then it will replace that. Okay. Then, remember it's a two. He rolled the two, so it's going to be a statue marked with that, and that's going to be this one. And we're getting a little tight on space, but that's okay. That's okay. Put it right there. I actually put it upside down because the symbol is the important part that you guys can see. Um, done. Done. Okay. So that's its board action for that, and then here it gains two points. For that one. So two, two, and two. Cool. All right. So now it would be my turn, but as it is, instead, it's going to, we're going to have a festival. So, the festival, I want to make sure I don't forget anything on his part. Uh, right here. There we go. All right, so let me get to the festival. Here we go. So I got my points. I get a free merchant action. 
Unfortunately, I don't have any connection, so no merchant action for me. Whereas the Automa, and actually, uh, I will, yeah, let's do his. Free merchant action, he gains a victory point per weaving that it has. So one, two, so he's going to gain two points there. The next step is victory points to the right of the current position on the temple track. He's going to gain three, I'm going to gain one. And we're tied. Then the conquest region, we did no conquest so far out here. We haven't covered any of that yet, so we don't need to worry about any of that. We have to pay a potato for every god card in our hand. Now, I have this building which gives me four potatoes. I have three god cards in my hand, so I'm actually only going to take one potato. However, Oxuma does, uh, Oxumama, uh, does not pay potato for its tuck god cards. So, doesn't pay for any of those. So, all right. Then, uh, return the festival token. I'm just going to put it over here so it's easier for me to reach. And then we're going to draw in the village, refill that. Top to bottom, there, there. What's up, Alexander? It's actually not that bad, Genway. So there we go. All right, we have refilled the village. Uh, if playing with two players and only during the first festival, place one worker randomly drawn from the bag on each space marked with an icon, a two-player icon in the middle terrace. If any of those spaces are occupied, skip those spaces. So, and I will show you guys this, zoom in a little bit. So it's a little bit hard to see, but I think you can see it. Just below the sideways G, you see that little two? That's why those spaces were filled out there. So we have one there. It's one per section. It's gonna be one there, okay? It's going to be, I'm looking, one here. Where is it? It's the squiggly over here, there, and it's that one. So it's one per section, and it just helps fill the board and gets meeples out of the bag. So done. We won't do that again, okay? Then we go into the festival draw phase. Let me see. For him, draw cards. Instead of drawing god cards, if it has fewer victory points than you, he gains two victory points. He does not. Okay, so now, after the first and second festival, draw god cards from the deck. In a two-player game, the player with the fewest victory points draws two. Player with the most draws one. If tied, closest player to the active player. So I'm going to draw two. So, there. Then in turn order, starting from the active player, each player can play up to three god cards to receive the benefits on the bottom. Well, I finally drew some stuff with different symbols. So I realized that I probably maybe shouldn't load up as much as I did. So here are my cards. I think it's just easier to do it this way. Um, and another thing, I think played stuff will go there and my in-hand stuff will go over here, so. Uh, let me look at symbols real quick. So I definitely want to keep one of these. So I'm thinking keeping the gold there, so I want to definitely keep that. Paying the three potatoes, valid. Um, man, getting that army card right now would be kinda, kinda helpful. Um, I definitely want to be able to produce as well. So I'm looking at, that's one production and it doesn't spend the buildings. No, I'm going to go ahead and play this card and get an army card. Nice. There. Okay. And I can play up to three of them. Do I want to play more is the question.
Is it worth the three potatoes or is it better to have the card? Because I'm going to get it either way, right? Whereas I'm not going to get the bottom of either of those. get a stone and then pay all my stone to be able to build another step. I think that actually, oh man, that's hard. You know what? I will go ahead and play this one as well. So I'll pay, I'll, I'll get a stone and then pay three stone to build steps. So the one that I would get there. And you know what? I know I'm going to do some conquest stuff here shortly, but I th this makes more sense in a lot of ways, but I don't want to give him two points. So I'm going to build it there. So I'm going to get the two potatoes and a corn and four points. There. And I do want to say that it says draw cards, and instead of drawing cards, if it has fewer. So before I play cards, it checks to see. But the fact that we were tied and scored, I think we're okay. I think we're good. So, yeah, that'll work. And I'm going to keep the other three cards in my hand. So these three will then go like so. There. You know what? Let's bring it out just a hair. There we go. That'll work. All right. And then if there are any buildings, they wipe. I'm just going to put them to the bottom of the stack because there's no way we're going to get through all of them. So we get two new buildings for each. Oh, that's nice. This one is, you can whenever you play a worker, you can play it and act as if it were a yellow when you play it. And this one is during a festival, uh, during a festival, you're going to get two potatoes, a corn and a, uh, and a, uh, stone. All right, cool. So that's it. It is now my turn. Good. So he's done. Yeah. All right. So it's our, our turn. Now I think because I did draw that, I think it's time for a little conquest. So this is the first time we're doing this. So maybe I ought to slow down a little bit. So here we go, into the second one. We're gonna do B, so two different secondary actions. So I'm going to go ahead and move the high priest clockwise, all right? And when I do so, we're gonna go into the conquest actions, okay? Can play uh, army cards from your hand for a potato each, and I have four potatoes, so or five potatoes, so I'm good. Then I can play the first one for free. Then in turn order, all players can place conquest markers and then discard or flip, da 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 and then I'm allowed to do a second one of those. All right, so let's walk through this. So first off, one, two, you're allowed to move up two spaces, so there we go. Probably ought to do that so it's easier for you guys to see. So conquest action. So I get to play one for free, so I will pay two potatoes, and now I will go ahead and play, I'll play mine, uh, let's see. You know what? I actually need that area. So these will be mine here. I have room out here. Hold on. We're okay. There we go. All right. And then for his, plays all the army cards in hand for free. So all of these come out for him. I feel like he cheats. Oof. Right, googly moogly. Okay. All right, and then he's going to choose spaces with the most skull in any conquest region, okay? But I get to go first. So I have six army, right? 
So now what we're doing, and I'll go ahead and zoom in and I'll use this as the example, but I, it'll, it'll apply for all four of the sections. By the way, it's a conquest action. So we're gonna go ahead and kill that green one right there. So he's dead. Okay, so looking down here, this symbol means you kill one army guy, meaning discard it from your play area. This symbol means you flip one face down, one army face down. Now, if all you have is a two army, then, well, you would have to flip over the two army. But this says to kill one and flip over one. In that case, you cannot use this to flip it over and then kill it. They have to be different cards in that case. Um, and then so on and so forth, and then you immediately get the bonus, and you mark it with one of your little discs. So there you go. So now, what is it we want to do? That is a hell of a good question. I do not know. I'm going to need corn to advance up the temple track. So I think that seems like a good idea. Uh, I'm looking around the board. That's just straight points up there. Over there is getting corn, gold, uh, steps, corn, temple tracks, which I have six. You know, that might not be a terrible idea. I think that might be worth it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over two of my army, and I'm going to kill two of my army. So we'll just put them face down there. I'm going to grab a disc, and we're going to go ahead right there and put it on that one. So as you guys can see, two and two, I paid the cost, and then I'm going to get a corn and a step up on the temple track. So, I will get a corn and a bump on the temple track. And whenever you move up on the temple track, you immediately get whatever's there. So that's going to be a potato. Oh, by the way, I should have... Should have shuffled these first. Hey, Sean. This game's actually pretty smooth. I realize that I'm, I'm, uh, I am I struggled in a couple of places, but honestly, it's just double checking rules. Um, but for the most part, I think it's moving pretty pretty smoothly. And let me double check here. Shuffle back in, uh, in there. Add four new, good. Yeah, none get flipped up, so I'm just going to top deck, and I will get that one. All right, done. So that was my first temple play. Okay, now the Automa is going to get to do theirs. Plays all their army cards in hand for free. Chooses a space with the most deaths, most skulls. So that's going to be two skulls, three skulls, three skulls. So it's going to be one of those, oh my good lord, okay. Um... And then in any conquest region with the fewest markers. So it's going to be this one. Oh, let me. Ugh. Is he really going to score 11 points? I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, here we go. Okay, so he's going to turn over two, and he says it, it prefers discarding one soldiers. So it'll flip over these two and kill these three. There. Oof. And he's going to score 11 points. That hurts. So up there to 29. Somebody, that, that jumped out. Seriously. So now all of these are played out here on the board for him. So one is face down, meaning it's been used, okay? And one is still available for a subsequent action, so on and so forth, okay? Um, all right, cool. So now he's done, but now I get a second one if I want, and I have two face up. 
available. So I could turn them face down. Now, there's also a bit of a area majority game here in each of the conquest regions because we're going to score points based on the number of uh, who, mm, let me rephrase that. Let me get the number of points. Equal to the number of workers in a casualty area. So during the festival scoring, depending on how many wor dead workers are up there, whoever has the most discs in each region is going to score that number of points. If tied, whoever's furthest to the right. So he's kind of disincentivized me to go over there. But what could I do? I could kill my double worker, which feels a little wasteful for two potatoes and a gold. I don't like that. I could flip it over for two God cards. It's not terrible. Um, I could kill him for a God card and a tapestry. By the way, this should be flipped up as well. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I might as well spend it. And to get the three points makes kind of good sense, but... I do have a lot of corn. Do I get that tapestry? Is it worth it? Because that gives me a free... It might be worth it. But I would have to kill him. No, it's not worth it. Fine. Three points. Done. And that will, as you can see, turn them face down. So that's ours. So that's face down, and that's face down for me. Okay? All right. Cool. So that's the end of my action. His turn. All right. So where is he? Uh, production. Does he have uh, two or more face-up production buildings? The answer is no. He has none. Or, over here, building... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Oh. Hold on. That one is... Worship. He actually can do that, can't he? And does he have one or more statues? The answer is yes, so he can do that one. Okay. All right. So, does he have one or more statues? The answer is yes, he does. He has that statue right there. So, he's going to go ahead and do that action. So, we're going to come over here. He's going to move over to that one. So, this says, uh, as much as it can afford. Okay. So, let's take a look at it. Um, perform as if in a multiplayer game and does max that it can. Okay, easy enough. So, discard a large statue to advance three steps on the temple or one small statue to advance one step. So, okay, he's going to advance one. Whoop, there. And he will discard this. This goes out of the game. There. And whenever he moves up on that temple track, he gets everything except for car god cards. However, there is a priority to those, and let me double check what that priority is. There we go. Uh, when it gains stone or uh, the meeple bonus, it takes whichever of those two it has the fewest of. So he has two workers and one stone. So, there you go. Just gonna grab a stone, pretty simple. Done, okay. So now, I could discard this temple to move, or, or that statue to move up. Getting the army card's awfully tempting, I'm not going to lie. As a follow. <sighs> I don't know that it's worth it. Just because I have those two cards. Get me two army. <laughs> I have been abusing the hell out of it, haven't I? I think we continue abusing it. I'm not going to do it, so done. So that's his turn. Okay.
I moved him, he's good, he's done, my turn. So I have a yellow, yellow worker, and I have a lot of options looking at my various god cards over here. So I have a yellow, and I do have the sideways H here, which will give me two of those actions. I don't have any stone. I could get some stone. A ton of potatoes. Eh, it's not really the, uh, the most exciting of actions. I could come over here to be able to activate not super exciting. And the fact that it's a yellow worker, if it's the first worker in a segment, meaning right here on that terrace, right here on that terrace, right here on that terrace, it wouldn't be anywhere except on the bottom. And I'm not willing to pay three? It'd be three food. Well, three potatoes to go down there. If I were to go down there and place it, say, where could I place it for what I want to do? This would produce, give me, no, no, it doesn't really seem worth it to me. It could actually only be one because it's yellow. I have the H, I have the cross, one. I just don't have enough stone. So, I guess what I will do, that would give me two stone. That would give me two stone and three potatoes. All right, we'll do that. So, I'm going to play that card, place my yellow worker right there that matches that symbol there. And it decreases uh, the placement cost by a potato or a corn. Show you guys this here. So the yellow one, right? But it's free for me to place there uh, unless I want to place off to one of the sides. I'll look at that in a second. And then uh, gain a uh, plus one task if it's the first worker in that segment. And again, segment is this area, this area, this area of that, etc. So you know what? Honestly, instead of getting a ton of potatoes like that, ooh, that's two actions versus just the one action. All right, we'll leave it there. I'm going to gain the two stone and the three potatoes for that. So two stone and three potatoes. All right, done. And I am going to recruit. I have a ton of potatoes. Getting a green actually works out really well, I think, for me. Yeah, but the red. Hold on. Yeah, I'll get the green one. And even though I only have one, I still can only recruit one at a time. Keep that in mind, all right? All right, so now his turn, its turn, however you want to word that, is uh, here, the conquest. More available, meaning face-up army cards plus a soldier per army card in hand. So he has one. Uh, does he have more available soldiers than number of casualties of war? There is currently one casualty of war up there, and it says more than. He has one face-up, and he has none in hand, so it's tied, so the answer is no, He's not going to do that. So then the rejuvenate, the rejuvenate, oop, wrong button, says three, uh, three or more face down buildings or army cards. Well, he only has one face down army card and no face down building, so he's not going to do that. So we're going to roll. Okay? All this making sense, I think. And wow, this sold out already, huh? All right, did not realize that. So it's going to be a one. We're going to discard that one. That'll come up here. So the one, he'll gain two corn. And that's just going to move one so I don't forget. Then he gets, to, if he can, build one of these two buildings. He can. So which one does he build? Let's take a look. And for the tiebreaker is build a random uh, for one gold or one stone, preferring to pay stone. So he'll pay one stone and random 
we'll do odd even. Odd it is. So he's going to build this one. That's going to refill so I don't forget. And all that matters for him is that he has it because he's not actually going to, I don't think that's going to matter at all. Where would, I think that was there. I think that was there. So that's done. That's going to come over here. There is no one on that track, so he's done. Okay. Oh, God. I forgot to actually place the worker. Furthest to the right, yellow. It's going to be in an H. And the cheapest cost, so an H here, and that will go right there. All right. Done. So now it's our turn. So now we have a green worker. We have a couple of squigglies and a cross. Being able to move up the temple track, that's kind of what I was wanting to do. But the question is, do I spend any of my squigglies here to be able to do any of these things first? And... I thought I had a plan with that green one, but maybe not. Maybe I was looking over here. So if that's the case, maybe we ought to go ahead and move our high priest because we have all that corn. And to be able to move, that's going to be, I believe, three steps up the... Uh... Yeah, I think so. So we're going to go ahead and do action B. You know what? gonna do this. So I have no army cards in hand. I forgot to take a second action on last turn when I did this. I got so tied up with the conquest. So I get to draw two, keep one. So I'm gonna just draw that in retroactively because I just realized I forgot to do that. So done. So for my first one, we're gonna move that over to there. But for my second one, I'll do that in a second so I don't forget. Um, I'm gonna take a worker from the nomads actually. I think so. What am I? No, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So draw two, keep one. So I will draw that. That's in my hand. And there. Now we will do the offering here. So I can spend two, four, or six corn to advance one, two, or three steps. I'm going to spend six corn. So two, four, and six corn to move up three steps. One, two, and three. Now, I get the bonuses on each of those when I hit it, or as I go, however you want to word that. So here, I'm gonna get draw two, keep one, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'll keep this one, because I can always discard it, discard it for a corn. So there's that. Then, I have no stone, so I can either take a stone or take a village. Uh, I believe that is from, hold on. That's from the nomads. Again, not really, I think I'll take the stone. And then I get two more stone. So that gives me a good position to be able to build more st uh, steps and or buildings. Plus, now we're gonna score some points on that. So that's good. So that's my turn, but he gets to follow. And for following on that is he can pay corn, again, to be able to do the same thing. So he can spend two, four, or six. Let me make sure. Yeah. Other players can spend three corn to advance exactly one step on the temple track. So he has three corn, so he's going to. So one, two, and three corn. He will advance one, and he'll gain two stone. Done. All right, that's my turn. I did both my actions. I'm good. All right, so his conquest or rejuvenate and conquest. More available soldiers. 
and casualties of war. Oh, still only one casualty, still only one, so no. Rejuvenate, he doesn't have any th uh, three down, so he's going to go and roll. Here we go. So, you guys following along? Is this making sense, I hope? Corn or stone, he has less corn, so he'll grab two corn for the top one. And then one, two, three, he'll move that there. Second row, there is no three, so disregard. And then this one is one, two, three, and he gains two points. Done. Oh, God. No, it's not. Again. That will come out. That will get refreshed. And on an H. So here, no H there, no H there. There is one up here. He will... Ah, uh, this is the second... Hold on. This is the second uh, round. So he will choose the second terrace if possible. So here, and that was the H. There we go. That's the part I forgot. All right, cool. All right, our turn. What are we trying to do here? Get more corn now. Oh, appreciate that, Varex. It's a little sweater, actually. All right, so now that we've moved over there, we have our green meeple. I have the squigglies and the cross symbol. Doing a very poor job of trying to plan this out. I actually would like to build some steps, but I'm, I don't have a gold either, so I can't spend that. Producing, though, might not be a terrible idea here. That would get me three corn and three points. Is that worth it? The other option is, with no steps in front of me, is basically I would get either right here, I would get stone and potatoes. I have a bunch of stone though. That was the idea that I was planning on doing, but. No, I don't think I like that. I think we're gonna go ahead and do this. And for the second action here, I'm trying to debate. Do I get more God cards to be able to help myself out for uh, variability? Or, or, since we have a ton of potatoes, I think actually we train. Yeah, I think we train. Grab, keep grabbing army cards because next turn we're going to be able to do a conquest. I like that idea. So we're going to train for our first, oh, sorry, first action. So um, we're going to take that one there. Okay. And then... Produce. He has no buildings that produce for him. I, however, do. I get all of the benefits, uh, but I'm going to have to turn him face down. So I'm going to get two corn. I'll go and get uh, no, four, three. Yeah, I'm going to get three corn and three points. And I just realized, I didn't really talk about how we win. We have to score a minimum of 120 points, and we have to beat the Automa. So there we go. All right, that's my turn. I am pretty happy about that. All right, his turn, Conquest or Rejuvenate. Conquest still hasn't changed. Rejuvenate doesn't have three face down, so nope, he's rolling. All right, a four. So it's going to be a diamond symbol first for him. And that's going to wipe these cards there. 
And I realize that we technically should be shuffling. It's just easier so I don't forget. There. So the diamond symbol. And he pr uh, prioritizes the... Oh! Back up. You don't have any workers. So, no worker action. So let's back that up. Yeah, I don't want to know what it is. We'll just bury it. Okay. So, he doesn't have any workers, but he has to take a worker action. So, he recruits a random worker from the nomads. So, we'll do, since there's two colors, odd or even. Odd will be, and it doesn't matter which is which. So, he takes that. We refill the nomads immediately. Wow. Really? I mean, again, it's like there are a bunch of colors in here. We remove one of each uh, from the bag for a two-player game, by the way. But discard up to two god cards from the offer, and he gains a victory point for each, which technically there were three. So we'll just go to the right. The new two, so he would gain two points for that because it wouldn't have reset because he didn't discard that. So that'll be two points. Ah, there we go. Draw an army card. There. And moves his high priest one spot clockwise and does not perform the secondary action. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay. So he's done. That's his turn. So our turn. I was planning on doing this. He just got an extra army card, though, but he doesn't have a lot of army actions. Yeah, he only has one card and only one face up, and I have all those in my hand. The other question is, and I think for the green, I would like to be able to draw, oh. I think that's, oh no, but we're planning on going there, but it would cost, is it worth it? That, to grab a statue, build steps, that's not terrible. Still don't have a gold. Mm. What do we do? Yeah, we're going to do the, yep, we're going to do this. So we'll do the conquest. Somebody remind me I haven't taken my second one, because depending on how this plays out, uh, it might change what I do. Okay, so I get one played for free, and then I can play the others for one potato each for food. So I will pay my three potatoes, and all of these come out. Now, these are still face down. Keep that in mind. Those are mine. He pays uh, his there. All right. So now I get potentially two. So I have six armies. I could turn two face down and kill three. That would leave me a one. I think that's, I think that might be exactly what I do. Because that would get me two bumps up that. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. But I think I'm going to do the one first. I really, thing is, I want to put two markers up there, but that kind of, that limits the amount of points I can gain, and I'm going to go ahead and kill him for the conquest. Gain two god cards, that kind of actually might be good for me, but I could also gain two god cards as my second action, remember. Oh, you know what we could do? That's what we're going to do. As our first action, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to turn one of these face down. And draw two god cards. Do I want the H? Nope. Okay, have an H. And so I definitely will draw that, and I get to keep them both. So there's that. Good. That'll work. And then... He gets to go, 
and his priorities for him is fewest markers. So here he has a total of two. Cho okay, choose space with the most skulls in any conquest region. So he only has two armies, so it's going to be and then the fewest uh, markers, it's going to be this one. So he's going to go here. He'll kill one of his guys, and he'll get to put his marker there. And then for us, we have, uh, I think we're going to go up the two temple bumps. So, there. So it's going to be spend or turn two face down and kill three. Kill these three and turn these face down there. And that's two temple bumps. That'll be there and there, so that'll be a gold and a god card. I'll choose another random there. And then uh, look at two army and pick one. And yeah, we're going to have that, and that'll be in our hand as well. All right. That was productive. And now I still get a second action. So what do we want? Do we want a Nomad? We still have our green. Where are we? The yellow? I do have the right symbol for that. But next turn I'll be able to recruit potentially that yellow one up there. Mm. Nope, not going to take the Nomad. So I think we just draw two more army cards. And looking at the symbol, they're identical, so it doesn't matter. We'll go there. Done. Oh, appreciate that, Aaron. Let's see. Oh, you, in fact, did. So hold on one second. Cheers, Aaron. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Went to uh, pledgehc.com. Support the herd. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. All right. So we're done. That's our turn. So his turn. Rejuvenate. Three face down? No. And so there and corn. He does have three. He needs to have four or more, but he does have a gold, which does count. So he's going to move over to there. So now... He's going to go ahead and spend corn. So that's going to be two steps up the temple track. I feel like he's just copying me at this point. So two steps, one, two. So he'll get a gold. We know that. He will get one army card. We know that without looking. And then for whenever he gets a god card, what did I say he gets? Instead, uh, removes the oldest god card in the offer and places it at the bottom and scores a point. One. Done. All right. I can piggyback. Do I want to, though, is the question. Do I want to spend three corn to jump up one space? That's a lot. Or four would be two steps. And I could do that on my own next turn if I wanted, but I kind of want to rejuvenate. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. For three corn. I do not. I elect not to follow, so he's done. All right, so my turn. Do 
do I place the grain? That would save me corn. I would get him a point. Is it worth it? I think it's worth it to be able to pay a ton of potatoes and not have to pay my corn and then do that. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and play that God card. I'm going to spend the green on this black or uh, yeah, regular squiggly. I do have that statue, so I'm going to gain three potatoes. And then I get one action, which is I'm going to use to gain three potatoes. So I actually gain six potatoes. And then I'm going to spend one of those potatoes to recruit that yellow. I think. Gonna go there, gonna go there. I think so. Yeah, done. All right, his turn for production. He doesn't have two face up, no. And for statue, he doesn't have any statue, so he's gonna actually take his turn. And he has a worker this turn. Four. All right, so now we can do what we were trying to do earlier. There. So it'll be the diamond symbol on the second row where he is, if so. There are no diamonds here. There's no diamonds here, but there is one there, so he'll place it there. All right. So the fourth one, there is nothing here on the top for a four. Interesting. So I, since this is the first time we've rolled a four... He actually only does the num right? Yeah, I. Yeah, so he's just gonna do this, which that one is uh, over here. Sorry. Sorry, board actions over here. Um, builds a random uh, for one stone or one gold. So it's going to be a random one, so we'll do odd even. Even, and then odd even. So the first one, and that'll be one stone. There, put it up here. There we go. That's it. And it's going to move four. One, two, three, and four. So it'll move to there. That's it. Wow, that's really it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. My turn. I'm going to move here to rejuvenate. Now, rejuvenation, it's actually on here. I don't know why I keep looking at the book for this. Um... Everybody can flip over all their buildings and their army face up, paying a corn for each. And I get to uh, either, I can pay potatoes instead of corn, and I get one for free. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can pay five potatoes. One, two, three, four, five, and flip everything face up. Don't mind if we do. Keep in mind, these are still in my hand. So actually, why don't we do this? There we go. Those are in my hand. And now these are face up. Hey, David. I think it's going all right, but I mean, we'll see. You're not kicking me in the teeth yet. So there's that. And for the Automa, uh, since it's following, it flips up half rounding up of its total number of face down production buildings and half of its face down army cards uh, rounding up. Well, he only has one, so that gets turned face up. There we go. Okay. And now I get a second action. Ooh wee. And now.
I want corn. Um, I think I will go ahead and take the priest from the nomads. We immediately refill. There we go. That's my turn. So his turn, again, it's produce uh, three or more buildings. He only has one production building. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's two or more face-up production buildings. He only has one. And the other one is statues. He has no statues, so he's going to roll. It's going to be two, so it's going to be the cross symbol. All right, so looking here at the cross symbol, it's going, ah, he has no worker. I did it again. Damn it. It's twice. All right, so no worker. A random one. So you know what? Uh, yeah, we'll just do one through four. Okay, he gets the warrior there. And when he recruits it, he gets an army card. So there, okay. Then discards up to two God cards from the offer, gains a victory point for each. Will you stop doing that? There. And then uh, draws an army card, another one, because this one was for that. So he, she, 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 she. And then moves the high priest one spot clockwise, but doesn't perform it. Done. My turn. I really want two more corn before I move. Damn it. Oh, and by the way, that should have replaced there. Ah, uh, I want corn. How can I get corn where I'm at? I really can't because going this way, I could, I mean, I could pay. I could build some stuff. I have white and yellow. Before I move to there, I want to recruit, or I want two more corn. So I could, oh, there it is. I think that's what we do. It's worth giving him the point, I think. Yeah, all right, so here we go. I found it. So what we're gonna do is we are going to play this. We have that statue still. I'm making pretty good use of that, I feel like, there. And I gain a point for doing that. I get the bottom of it. I will go ahead. It's not going to be the first, so I might as well. Yeah, I'll use the yellow, actually. There we go. So going down to use this level normally will cost me two food. But there's steps, which minus two food, so it's actually free to be able to do that. Now, because I used his steps, he gets a point. Womp womp. And then I get one action. Ugh. So I just lamented corn, right? Getting two corn there. However, if I build a big statue, it costs three stone and two gold, and it's nine points. Whereas an extra bump up the statue, uh, up the track is only three points. I think we build a big statue. I wasn't planning on doing that. Um, wow, I really wasn't planning on doing that. Yeah, let's do it. Three stone and two gold. Which statue do we want? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at this one, which will give me corn, but we're about to go into a festival, so I can discard that to get to corn anyways. So, I think, and there's nothing on here. Uh, oh, I guess technically there's that, but... I think, 
I don't really have a really good reason for any of it. So you know what, just in case I choose not to, we'll go ahead and bring that one in. And that can go down here. There we go, done. There we go. I like that. And that will be nine points. Well, don't mind if we do. And now, do we want to recruit six? Yes, we do. I will go ahead and pay a potato because it's the last one here. I'll go ahead and grab that one there. And then we're going to have a festival at the beginning of my next turn. So I go ahead and gain the two points there. Boom, done his turn. So now, worship by donating statues. He doesn't have any statues. And then conquest, however, more available Face up soldiers, then number of casualties of war. There are two casualties. He has more soldiers there, plus one for each. So he's definitely going to do a conquest action, which I support. I totally support him doing this. So his high priest action plays all his army cards for free, which kind of sucks, but tis what it is. Oh, God. Oh, all right. Uh, and then choose a space with the most death in a conquest with the fewest markers. So the highest, so two here, two there, three there, and three here. Fewest markers, it's going to be here, it's going to be that one. So it's going to cost him three deaths and he prefers discarding singles. By the way, these are all mine over there. So it'll be single, 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 those will go away, and he gets two tapestries. Now, whenever he gains tapestries, the rule on that was weavings, sorry. Come on, where are you? Okay, here you go. It buys two, uh, nope, that is for that, but gaining two, he's just gonna take two from the top of the stack. So I would argue that he would take this one and he would take that one, so. And then we flip that one back up. Oh, that's not good. All right, so now I can follow. Where do I have the advantage? I got that locked down. I could take this one or I could take this one. We are about to go into a festival. Gaining some resources wouldn't be terrible. I'm just looking at building the building there uh, and gaining two points or a couple of statues. How many do we have? Hold on, two. We do have seven. Gave me two statues, which would be more up the track as well that we could donate, right? Oh, man. I think we're going to do this. I think that it might be crazy, but let's do it because we only get one of them. So we're going to turn all seven face down. And we gain two statues of our choice. Well, okay. Might as well keep all the statues together here. So I have those. So let's go ahead. We'll grab a G. I don't have any G cards yet, but I, I have faith. And yeah, I like... Uh, I like the H one. Let's go with that. Boom, done. I like that. That'll work. Now for his second one, it chooses a, a space across regions with the fewest skulls for free. So one skull, one skull, one skull. And then same order, I would argue, uh, less 
Let's see, it is fewest markers, then fewer than three of its own markers. Fewest markers, so I would say this one. So it will get that, okay. There, so it'd be three potatoes, which it now has five potatoes, which means it's going to get five points. Screw you, Automa, and two stone, and five points for that. One, two, three, four, and five, because anytime it has five potatoes, it gets five points. Done. That is its turn here. It becomes my turn. We're going to have a festival. All right. Ain't no party like festival party. Here we go. Uh, a free market action. So he doesn't get one. So he gets one point per weaving. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I suck because none of mine match. So that's done. Then gain any rewards from the temple. We each gain nine points to 49 and nine to 55. Then, oh, reward and, po oh, and we each get a gold. I forgot to do that last turn uh, for wherever we were. Yeah, that ship has sailed, but FYI. Uh, now, score points for most conquest markers in each area. There are two bodies over there, so I'm going to get two. He'll get two. He'll get two. And I have more, so it's going to be four and four. One, two, three, four. I feel like I'm just treading water here. I pay one potato for each god card in hand. I only have two, but I'm getting four because it's a festival, so that's a wash. He doesn't pay any for doing that for any of his god cards up here. Uh, and instead of drawing god cards, if it has fewer victory, fewer victory points than me, he gains two. He doesn't. Uh, refill the village. So we're going to refill the village. These guys are out of the game. And if you don't... Oh, by the way, this should have replenished when I took them. Uh, if there aren't enough, then you fill what you can. And there are enough. Because if you're powering through the uh, nomads, then... There won't be enough, and there are two left. Okay. All right. Okay, the buildings go away as well. Blue or green, green or blue, and that is anytime you could gain a tapestry, you can you look at five of them and then discard two of them. Obviously, I'm going heavy on tapestries this game. Not really. So I am in second place, so I'm going to gain two god cards, and then I can discard up to three, remember, and do whatever's on the bottom. Hmm. Well, I was going to discard this, and then build a step. But I could when I do that anyways. So I think I'm gonna hold on to that one. I like getting the corn, there's that. I think I'll go ahead and gain the two corn in the point for this, even though I know I would, but I want that up first. So two corn and a point, that's one. Um, you know what, actually, because I have this, I'm going to go ahead and spend that one. That's going to be gain a stone, and then I'm going to spend the three stone to build some steps. And let's go ahead and build them right there. So it's going to get me two potatoes, a corn, and four points. 
there. Do I want to spend a third one? I don't think I do. I think I'm good with that. So that's it. Done. And he doesn't do that. All right. We refresh those there. We need to shuffle the God cards and then we go into the final one. Here we go. I'm really enjoying this, by the way. I hope, I hope that's coming through. It's tense. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. I still have to get another 62 points to qualify to win. Uh, but that said, I'm still, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, yeah, quite a bit, actually. All right, and this goes back. All right, so it's my turn. I have all this corn. The purpose of me getting this corn was to go and do this. So now I'm gonna spend six corn. One, two, three, four, five, six corn. And I'm gonna go up three steps. One, which is gold, and then nothing, nothing. But, working our way back to you, babe. And when he follows for that, he doesn't have three corn. He has two gold, so he can't follow. So that seemed like a good time to do that. And so that was one action for my second one. Uh, I don't want to take a uh, one from the nomads because it's immediately going to go away. So you know what? Let's go ahead and just draw two. That'll work. Good. All right, I'm done. So his turn. Rejuvenate. He has everything face up. That's moot. And then spending corn. He doesn't have it. He's not going to do that. He needs that four corn. Technically has two because he has two gold. So instead he's going to roll. So it's a four. So squiggly. We're in the third one, remember? The, he does have a worker. Uh, the third one is going to be the bottom row, preferring where he is. So squiggly, boom or boom, and then random, odd, even. Odd it is. He'll go there. Okay, so this was a four, nothing. And here he'll build steps if he can, he can. He'll get rid of three stone. And the order in which he wants to build those is, uh, builds in the high priest section if possible. So here, um, otherwise next sections clockwise in a valid spot, avoids building under mine if possible to build elsewhere and always prefers to build upper steps if possible, always. So I would argue that there are none on the top row. Builds in its section if it can, it can. So it's going to do that. I mean, why wouldn't it, right? Plus it's more points. So six points, four, and then two for being below his own. And then he's going to get two spuds and a corn. Hey, Marie, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, uh, I almost spoke in Spanish. That wouldn't have worked. Uh, bonjour. There you go. Couldn't think of what hello in French was. Sorry. I appreciate that. All right. Hey, remember, if you guys are enjoying it, give it a thumb down below. Subscribe. Support the show over on PledgeHC.com. I certainly would appreciate it. By the way, I had music queued up and totally forgot to hit play. Let's do that. All right. All right. So he did this. It moves four. Wow. So it's going to be some tapestry action there, and he's done. Okay. So, my turn. I have a red and a white. Red isn't terrible. I'm hurting for resources. So basically, I want to, so what do, I have that symbol, I have that symbol, I don't have that. I have that, I have that, and I don't have that. Okay, so I don't have those two symbols, but I have the others. And I can't build, I can, I have two gold. Yeah. Yeah. 
don't have the G. I think getting the, the three corn would be really, really nice. Well, I'm coming up on this, which allows me to discard statues. Right, so if I want to do this, I probably ought to do it now. So looking for a diamond symbol near where my high priest is, there's nothing going out that way other than that. That would give me, but it, I don't want to spend the, eh, it's potatoes. Nope, I'm not going to go down there. So then the other option is I could go here. could spend a gold. Nah. I want to build steps. That's that's ultimately what this comes down to. So where can I build steps? Here, I don't have the G, but it would cost me three. Re so it cost me three. Uh, I don't know. So wait, a diamond symbol allows me to build steps. There it is. Got it. This, that would be free. I then gain that and I'd spend the two gold to do it. Or, how about we wait one turn? How about we do this and go and produce? So, one of these doesn't flip over because I'm producing. I forgot to do that last time. So I'm going to actually get three corn and three points and I'll flip that one over. That's one of the, that's the bonus for me being the player that does that. And three points there. That, I like that better. And now for his follow, um, he gets two stone and it turns it face down. There we go. All right, his turn, rejuvenate, rejuvenate. Three face down army cards or and or buildings, no. And corn, he only has a total of three corn there, so he's gonna roll. He has no workers, doesn't matter. Recruits a random worker from the nomads. Again, one through four. There, he gains an army card when he does that. We immediately refill the Nomad. Wow. A lot of yellow Nomads. All right. Then uh, discards up to two God cards from the offer. So there's only one. So he gains one point. Draws another army card. And by the way, I don't know if I've shown you guys this yet. So... I think... Yeah, I think, yeah, this will work. So I can show this. I don't know that I actually, where, if he has no, so this is the list that I'm going through, right? And then moves the high priest one spot clockwise and doesn't perform it. So, whoop, to the rejuvenate, done. My turn. So now that I did that, now I didn't get stone. Why didn't I, I'm a moron. I couldn't, that's right. That's fine. So then, by the way, how's the volume on the music? I'm gonna play this. I have that guy, or that statue, which means I can do the bottom. I would gain a stone, but I'm gonna spend it and spend two gold to be able to build some steps. This is my last steps that I can build. I'm gonna go ahead and build them. And... Nope. We're gonna build it here. And that's gonna cost me that, but it's going to get me six points. Two corn, uh, two potatoes and a corn. I feel like I'm watching Top Gun with this music kinda. Uh, okay, so that was playing this for the steps. And now I'm gonna place a worker there. And I will There, now this is the first time I've done this, so let me show you guys. 
A warrior. Take an adjacent worker other than a warrior and draw a uh, army card. So, anything adjacent. So, one of those two blues. That's on a cross symbol. Or on a cross symbol. Eh. Um, you know what? I'll take that one. So, I get to take that. I draw an army card into my hand. There. And I get, to do, I get to do one action, and that'll be to grab two stone. Done. That's it. His turn. Corn. He does have three. No, he needs four or more for this. So there. Or the produce uh, two face-up production buildings. He has none, because the one he has is face down. So he does have a worker now. That will go there. So, four. All right, so where is he? On the bottom row, looking for that right there. Okay, that's a, that's a lot of fours I've been rolling lately. So he produces a weaving on this one. And this is, triggers the action. He buys two weavings if possible, unique in largest set, uh, and the cost for this, um, I believe, was corn. A moment. Yeah, so we're going to draw two of these off the top. There. And it's going to cost one, three, or six corn. He has three, so he can buy two. So the two gold goes away and the corn. And, okay, so buys two if possible, unique in the largest set. So what, it, okay, so he's gonna buy this one, he has that one and he has that one. So then, uh, and then he would prefer red, green, yellow in the highest number. Red, green, hold on. So this one is going to come out. There it is. When choosing weavings, prefers to add a new one to its largest tapestry before adding to the smallest tapestry or starting a new one. More than one possibility exists. Uh, it chooses with the highest uh, weaving number, the reference number. So there's little numbers on here, so 10. So that'll start a second one for him. I can throw that right there. That'll be show that it's the second one. And now for me, for following, no, I'm not following. He did this. Sorry. Um, cool. Done. So four. One, two, three, four, and he's done. Okay. My turn. I don't have the gold now. <laughs> Um, I have no steps. Could gain four corn. Is it worth it at this point? One, two, three, one, two, three. I think it might. No, I have enough. I don't need the corn now. Okay, so if I don't have the corn, let's look at what else we can do down here. Um, I don't want more statues. Maybe we go ahead and try and buy some weavings to try and help myself out over here. And the statues, three, oh, I can't. I won't be, oh, so I don't want to do that one. What about a squiggly? That I will do. That'll work. I will play that. I have that statue, which means I get two corn and a point. There. We're going to go ahead and place it right here. And we'll place the white one there. And it's free because I, or check that, it's not free. It's five to come down here in the same section. Minus two, minus two. So it'll be one. And I'll go ahead and spend the spud for that. And now, because it's a white 
it's a priest. I take one from the offer out here. I'll go ahead and top deck it. There. And I can pay a plus one. I can play a, pay a potato to gain one other task, so I will. I will do this and I will do that. So I will grab two stone. And then this, paying corn, I can look at three of these. Well, I want the ones he doesn't have. And I have this one already, so I'm going to buy these two. And that's going to be a total of three corn. Do they not clean? You know what? You're right, Bart. Those should not have cleared. You're right. And there weren't any in the first one, plus there were no conquests. You're right. Good call. Those never clear. I don't know why I did that. So now... So that matches up, and then... Unfortunately, this does not. So, there we go. You know what? It really doesn't matter. But just to keep it a little bit more organized. There we go. Somewhat. All right. So that was here, there, and there, and done. All right, his turn. Corn, no. Production, no. Roll, he has no workers. So therefore, recruits a random worker. How about a yellow one? I think that one looks good. All right. Refill. Last worker from the bag. There will be no more refilling. So that's done. Then discard up to two, the oldest two. Gains a point for each. Two. Draw an army card. And moves us high priest clockwise one. All right. So now, my turn. I have a blue there. Let's get that separate. So now the question is, do I want to come down here and trigger some of that stuff? Now that I have stone, I think I do. And then I move over there. Because you're allowed to discard how many statues? Four. One, two, three, four. I think that's worth it. But do I need to build it? I don't know that I do. It's worth points. So what the hell? And I'm out of... Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we will play a blue here with that card. I have that statue, so I'm going to come here. That'll be one for placing it and two for an, uh, an adjacent. I get a stone. I'm going to pay that stone and two other stone to be able to build the statue and gain three points. There. Whoop. And what statue do we not, what shape do we not have? Uh, I have the G, I have that, I have that. I don't have the V for victory, done. Okay, so that was this. And now, having placed here, I'm gonna, I can't build steps, I will produce Corn and corn and get four corn. It's kind of corny, but ba dum bum tss. And when you produce here, it doesn't tap your building, so that's good. All right, done. And I will recruit, and I'm going to recruit a blue spending a spud for doing so. Done. His turn. Produce, no. No statues for him. He has a worker he'll roll. Three, so diamond. All right, so the diamond on the lowest level, if possible, right there, done. All right, 
So here we go. He gets two stone. That'll move three. Nothing on the middle. And then here, he'll grab uh, the spud one. One, two, three. And he gained that, so he gets a corn. All right. I think that's it. All right, my turn. Now, we will go here, which on the warship, discard statues. You're allowed to discard a large and or a small. Three for the large, one for the small. I will get rid of that one, and I will get rid of the G. So these are out of the game, but it gets me four steps. One, two, three, four, done. He can, but he has no statues, so he elects not to take that action. And as my second one, um, we'll draw two god cards. One, and I'll take the squiggly here. Done. All right. His turn. Produce statues, no, no. He has a worker, he'll roll two. So on the cross one. So the worker, where he is here on the cross one, will go there. All right, so two, he'll gain two corn. That advances. Two. Tapestries, he can build, uh, purchase up to th two, because he has enough. So there. So let's see, he has this one, he has this one, he has this one. So he's going to start those two for his second one, and that'll cost him all three corn. One, two. And then it doesn't matter for his lining up, like so. There we go. And then he rolled the two, so he's going to have one of these guys, random, one through four, left to right. It'll be, how is it he has only got, he's gotten this one every time, the odd between those. That's amazing. And he gets a stone for doing that. He's done. Our turn. He has so many god cards, or so many army cards, I really don't want to trigger the conquest, I don't think. So, I have a ton of corn right now, but it, I will, there. So I have these three. I get to play one out of my hand for free. I'll spend two potatoes to do so. Oh, but if I... Oh, wait. Nope. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to play Rejuvenate instead. Yeah. The Rejuvenate, uh, I can... I can play, pay corn or potatoes to flip them face up. So that'll be four in the first. No, I can. Yeah, four. I get one for free. So that'll be three. So that'll be two potatoes and a corn. Do I want to flip the building? I will for one more corn. He can pay a corn, and he has none to flip any face up, so he can't. Done. And for my second action, I'm going to draw two army cards, keep one. I will draw that one. Done. His turn. Again, production, no. No statues. He has a worker, so he rolls. Ah, ha, ha. That was there, I think. So he rolled a three. These wipe.
And on the H where he is, that will go there. So he rolled a three. He gets three potatoes, which is going to give him five. He immediately turns those into five points. 73. No three. Here, he gains an army card. One, two, three. One, two, three. Done. My turn. I mean, I think we'll go there, and I will pay three corn. Whoop. He has no corn. He's not moving up. Done. And then I will draw another army card. Uh, I get to draw two, keep one. Doesn't matter. Done. His turn. No produce, no statues, no workers. So, recruits a random, does not matter. There, yellow means he gets a potato and a point per the bottom there. Then discards up to two, so there's only one here. He discards that, gains a point, draws an army card. Oh, God, that's going to be scary. And uh, moves his high priest one. Done. So now, for us... Nope. Okay. I'm going to play that. I still have that statue, so I will get those. I'll play this right here, and I get two because it's adjacent to one uh, blue worker. So, therefore, I'm just going to get six potatoes, two corn, and a point. Done. Done. His turn, no, but probably yes. On the more available soldiers, he does. Then there are casualties. He's going there. So he gets to play all these for free. Here, hoo, hoo. this is going to be a big one. These are, okay, those are all singles. And these are all doubles. Hey, they. I, however... I can pay one potato each to get these out of my hand, and that's five. That's four, and that's five. It's almost like I anticipated that. Mine, I'll go ahead and throw out here. So twos and ones. Okay. All right. He goes first. So, most skulls. Two, two, three. So it's going to be up there. He gets to build steps. So that'll go there. So one thing at a time. First, he prefers to kill the singles. Okay. I assume so, Bart. So now, building steps. Prefers where he is. Prefers on the top level if not possible. Otherwise, next section clockwise if a valid spot. So he'll go there because second level is completely full. He'll get two potatoes, a corn, and six points because he built below his own steps. Six to 81. Okay, so that was his first build. And now for us. I mean, the seven points is probably what makes the most sense. So I will, turn, I will kill two of these guys. One, two, and turn these guys face down. 
there. And that'll be seven points. 79. And all of these guys are available for yours truly. Okay. He gets a second one. Uh, the fewest skulls for free. So all of these guys. So fewest skulls. We have one. Let's see, there's three, three, two here. It'll probably be here. Right? So the order is fewest markers. There are two here, so yeah, it's going to be here. So he's going to kill one of his guys and flip one of these over, one of his deuces. Okay. And he gets three potatoes which is going to turn into those two, which is five points. And two more stone. Okay. He's done. My turn. Whew. I have no workers. How did that happen? Did I not recruit? Oh, did I forget? Ah, I did. Um... Let's go ahead and produce. So I will get three. I don't know that I need the corn, do I? I don't think I do. So I'll get two corn, a potato, and three points. And the reason is because I want to get over here for the conquest. So three points, one, two, three. By the way, he just did a conquest. That guy dies. Um, and I will flip that one face down. He can't produce, and I get a second one. I will draw two of these bad boys. Done. His turn. Rejuvenate. Rejuvenate is three face down buildings or army cards. One, two. Nope. Three, three or more, I should say. And corn. He only has one corn. He has a worker. He is going to roll. Two. So the A and the A, where is he here? Right there. So two, he'll get uh, tapestry. So do, can he do this in the second one? No, he has that one. So he'll add that one there and a gold. One, two, here. Uh, he'll spend one stone to randomly produce uh, or build one of these, so odd, even. Odd and then odd, even. That one. So that was a two. That will move there. And then here, he'll take one from the corn side there, and when he does so, he gets an army card. So this could be my last turn if I want it to be. It is not going to be. I'm going to have two turns left, I think, maybe. So I am going to go there for a conquest action. I'm not playing anything out of my hand. He is. He has those. I have a ton of dudes. So I want whatever is going to benefit me the best. And where I can win tiebreakers, so on and so forth. Two points in a building. By the way, this should have refreshed. Three, three, three. So where is he going to build? Less than three of its own markers is next. If tied, and this will be with the most skulls. He has five. So he could do this. This or that. So he would actually do this one. So if that's the case, maybe I go ahead and do that. Or that might be better. 
Yeah, actually, I'm going to kill one of my guys. He'll die a hero. And I'll place my marker here, which will give me a god card, which is going to be two points at the end of the game, and a tapestry. I do want this one, so I will take that. And I will go ahead and add that right there. That works out. And now he will, so I want to make sure I get this right. Choose a space with the most in any conquest region. Fewest markers, tied. So it'll be, well, no. Now it'll be here, there, or there with the most skulls. So it'll be this one. Yeah, that works out. He kills this and flips these two over. And he'll get four gold. And that will die. Uh, for my second conquest, what do I want? Four points? Or a building and two points? In case I get, I think I will do... No, no, I think I will do that up there. So I will turn that face down. And he will die a hero. Yeah. And that'll be four points. Done. So that was one action. My second action is I'm going to draw two of these. And honestly, I don't care what they are at this point. They're simply points for me. So that was my turn, his turn. So let's see. And I forgot to move that one there. Okay. Okay, rejuvenate. Three or more face down army or buildings and or army cards? Yes, he does, so he's gonna do the rejuvenate action. Okay, so flip face up all its production buildings and or army cards, and, sorry, army cards for free. And then draw, oh my God, I think I've missed this every time, guys. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay, so all of these flip up, and that flips up. I don't think it's a massive thing, but it does say, and then draw an army card and discards up to two god cards from the offer. I don't think that's really made a huge difference. So he draws an army card and discards both of these. So Because I've been mostly drawing from the deck, and he doesn't get points for that, I don't think. So I don't think that's a huge deal. And the Rejuvenate, I could follow. And I can pay a corn to do so, and I will. I will pay a corn to flip that, and I'll pay a corn to flip that, and I'll pay a corn to flip that. I can do these things. Just got a really nice uh, message from a publisher saying they really appreciate my playthroughs. That's really nice to hear. All right, so it's our turn. Ouch. So I think, I think we're gonna trigger it. Oh, by the way, oh no, 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 no. Last turn, when I did my conquest action, I should have taken this. So I'll get four points, but he just took his turn, and before my turn happens, we do the festival. That's going to trigger the end of the game. So we go through the festival. So merchant action. So I get a potato and another god card. There. Okay. Uh, do I have any other matches on this? And I get two stone. In case that matters. So I have a match right there. I got that, and that's it. Okay. So then, game rewards. 
this side, so he'll get a gold. I don't get anything for that side, but he gains nine, I gain 22. That seems better. Nine to 95 and 22 is 112. Okay. And now conquest region. Each conquest region is gonna be worth four points. That's me, that's me, that's me, that's him. So that'd be 12 to four. Four and 12. Well, we eclipsed one of those. Now I have to pay one potato for every God card left in my hand. I have one, oh God, I have more than that. Oh boy, this could hurt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I get four potatoes plus the, because of that, plus these, so I am four short. And I lose two points per. I'm four short. I lose eight points. That was piss poor planning on my part. Don't refill the village. And drawing cards, skip it during the uh, the end. So for him, he doesn't pay. He draw instead. Of, he doesn't do that. So now we go into final scoring. Score the temp temple pinnacle. I'm gonna get twenty for that. Uh, score tapestries. So their longest is one, two, three, four, five. They will get 10. And then the other one is a four, which is a total of, uh, that's six, so 16. There to 115. For us, we have five and one, which is worth zero, so that's 10 points. 10 to 146. And then any end game scoring building cards. Um, check that. Two points per face up building. Two, four, six, two, four, six. 52 and six to 21. Then one point for, per God card in hand. I actually have, I get two because of this. And that's why I was doing that. So two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So twenty-two points. Seventy-four. Then uh, one per face up army card. He gets three. I guess we can uh, bump up the difficulty for me. One, two, three, four, five. Because it looks like I, I whoop David's ass on this. One per gold. I have none. He has six, provided I played it right. And one per meeple left, he gets one. Yours truly, 179, Automa 131. Oh, I have to add more numbers on this, apparently. There we go. There we go. Uh, let's see. Um, there we go. So that's it. That's uh, to want and sue you solo. I gotta, I gotta say it. It felt good. I mean, I realized that I'm referring somewhat to the rule book quite a bit actually, and all the aids that are on this help a lot. Um, and then the player aid here is amazing. I keep forgetting how good this is. And so I kept looking at the rule book instead of just looking at this. That's on me. That's not on the game. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought this felt great. I feel like I cheated somewhere though, to have smoked the Automa that badly. But on that note, let's see, how do we increase the difficulty then now that we've got that played? So let's see, it says uh, on the warship and offering spaces, if the Automa initiated it, it first advances once for free on the temple track. So it gets an extra bump. That would have, that would have helped it for sure. Conquest. Its soldier strength only needs to be equal to the number of casualties of war in order to take a conquest action. So in other words, it's going to uh, use conquest more. And to conquer a region space, it gets a one soldier discount on the flip and a one soldier discount on the discard. Ooh, 
Ouch. Okay. And then whenever the uh, Automa chooses a high priest secondary action, it scores two victory points. So every time it's moving around, the oh. Yeah, I, th I, I like that actually. During the festival, it scores an additional point per weaving, so two points instead of one. If the Automa takes no, uh, the no worker action, it scores two points. And the Automa scores a victory point for each leftover resource, so two victory points per gold it has at the end of the game. That would have made it considerably closer, I think. Yeah, I dig that. I like that. So, there's a lot going on, but it, it, it feels like it, it flows smoothly. It's a point salad. I mean, let's be honest, but... I think it's a clever one. I really enjoy this. I really do. Um, and I went a totally different direction. Like I went heavy into statues. I wasn't planning on doing that, but just the way the game kind of played out kind of made sense. And at first, the first few times I played this multiplayer, uh, I really thought statues were a complete and total waste. I see that's not the case because look at all the bonus resources and bonus actions I got. The actions being the building of steps and everything else that I got from just triggering the bottom of the cards, right, from the statues. So I do think that there is merit to that. And uh, yeah, and it looks really busy. I mean, let's, I mean, you take a look at it, right? It does have a lot going on, but it's perfectly clear to me now that I've played it even the first turn, it all made sense to me because you see the pathways and all this and where you can place your workers. Yeah, obviously, just like any other game, it's going to it's it's going to become clearer, right? And you're going to see the actions and, and what it is, the strategy, as you go along, as you play it more, that becomes clear. That's clearly the case for me, this being my fourth play of the game now. Uh, first solo. So what uh, somebody had asked earlier, what player counts do I like it at? I've only played it at, uh, at three and solo. I really enjoyed it both. I'll be honest. I really enjoyed the solo on this, but I, I gotta say, David Turtsy's really good at building a, a solo automa. I mean, there's a lot of steps to it, but you saw that as I got into a groove, it went really, really smoothly. Um, and so I think it went really well and it seemed pretty intuitive. Now, when you start upping the difficulty, you're probably going to want to make yourself a little crib sheet, and I'm sure there's going to be one for the added difficulty. Oh, make sure you give them points for this, points for that, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, overall, really enjoyed the game. That was a lot of fun. So there you go. Apparently it's sold out, but I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be another printing of it sooner rather than later. So ping. Board and Dice, keep an eye out for that uh, local, friendly local game store, online game store, however that may be. As far as the show, if you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumb down below. Subscribe, certainly would appreciate it. And thanks to those that choose to support the show over on PledgeHC.com. I will be back noon tomorrow for an Ask the Elephant. So if you guys have board game questions, hang out. Come chill with me on a Sunday afternoon. Other than that, I'm Edward. I will see you guys tomorrow afternoon. Be kind to one another, wear your masks, social distance. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. There it goes. Hey, we won. I'm getting kind of good at these solo games. This is kind of fun. I'm digging this. <laughs> Provided I didn't cheat. I'm sure the comments will let me know, though. I didn't do it knowingly, at least. See you tomorrow.